From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, as we head into the weekend, Montana counties report seven more deaths tied to COVID-19 across the state. The latest reports now bring the statewide total deaths to 300 this noon. Three of the victims are in Flathead County and one in each Yellowstone, Rosebud, Missoula and Glacier counties. The state also announces its second highest single day total of new cases with 863. This follows just one day after Montana shattered the single day record, reporting 932 new cases yesterday. But coronavirus cases in the U.S. sets a new record, rising to 77,000 in one day. This tops the previous high in July at over 75,000 cases in one day. There are just there are at least 223,000 people who have died due to COVID-19. Now the White House's Coronavirus Task Force is warning about surges in areas like the Sun Belt, the Midwest and Northern states. Well, a retired Billings doctor is back to work at St. Vincent Healthcare to help take care of COVID patients. Dr. Chris Spangen is working in the ICU at St. Vincent right now. She also spent a few weeks in New York while it was being hit with its highest concentration of cases. During her time there, Spangen looked after ICU patients who had complications from the virus, like fungal infections and pneumonia. That experience is helping her here in Billings, and she's confident in the local doctors and nurses. The group at St. Vincent's, and I'm sure Billings Clinic is the same way, and Riverstone Health are all working together. We do have the personnel here that I think is just as good and as experienced as it was in New York City. And Dr. Spangen doesn't know how much longer she'll work, but plans to be available for as long as she's needed. It's now time to check in on the weather scene with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. And the sun is shining here in our area, but the snow's already moving into Montana. That's right. Northwest Montana already under winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up to the Flathead Valley up towards Libby. You can see it on the map here. Now, by the time we get to about 4 o'clock this afternoon, that winter storm warning spreads out to around Great Falls, Missoula, southward down to around the Bozeman area, at least into the higher elevations there. And then by the time we take it out to eight o'clock, the western two thirds of the state really are blanketed in winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories. By tomorrow, we're looking at winter storm watches still into effect for much of the eastern plains. Most of the area is going to receive snow and bitter cold. More on that coming up. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, in Colorado, they continue to see a steady stream of hot, dry, and windy weather. Scenes of panic and destruction played out across northern Colorado yesterday as a late season wildfire exploded through the parched woods and valleys around Rocky Mountain National Park. Now, the East Troublesome Fire is now the second largest fire in state history at about 170,000 acres after it grew another 50,000 on Thursday following a 100,000 acre run on Wednesday. Now, pine beetle that have killed forests are not helping to slow down the flames. Well, flames in California continue to burn. Officials say 2020 will be studied for years to come to try to help fire crews in the future. Well, a man facing federal charges for digging in the historic Fort Yellowstone Cemetery says he did it looking for Forest Fens treasure. Roderick Craythorn was indicted in, on charges of excavating or trafficking archaeological resources along with damaging U.S. property. Investigators say he dug in the cemetery between October 2019 and May 2020. The Forest Fen treasure started a decade-long search and was finally located in Wyoming in June of this year. Craythorn's trial is set for December 14th. Well, the Montana Supreme Court will not hear a challenge hoping to remove a marijuana legalization initiative from the general ballot this year. Wrong for Montana, the committee opposing legalization efforts, says the initiative is unconstitutional because it attempts to appropriate state money through a ballot measure. But the high court ruled there's no reason the challenge shouldn't go to a lower court first. Wrong for Montana says it will now refile in district court. If marijuana legalization is passed, it would include a 20 percent sales tax. That money would then be redirected to conservation efforts, veteran services and substance abuse treatment across Montana.
Well, some businesses along parts of the High Line are expressing concern as Amtrak reduces its service to that area. As of Monday, trains will only come through the Haver Station three days a week instead of seven. Montana Senator John Tester questioned Amtrak's president on Capitol Hill. PJ's Lounge and Boxcars Restaurant and Lounge, both within walking distance of the Haver Station, say the trains are a big part of their business. We'll probably notice a loss in sales at least four days a week. We are going to have to try to make it up somehow. I think it's going to have a lot of impact on the town of Haver because it brings a lot of people in and a lot of business. Well, Red Lodge police are asking for help finding a missing woman. Amy Markle is from the Red Lodge area and was last seen on Sunday, October 18th. If you have any information on her whereabouts, you're asked to call the Red Lodge Police Department. That number is 446-1234. Well, the Montana Missing Indigenous Persons Task Force and Blackfeet Community College announced a launch of a new Missing Indigenous Persons Reporting Portal. That website allows individuals to complete online a contact information form about the missing person. Now, in the past, loved ones of missing people say they've expressed reluctance to report missing individuals directly to law enforcement. This new reporting system will serve as a go-between for those reporting and all levels of law enforcement. Once the form is submitted, an automatic notice will be sent to local tribal law enforcement first. Straight ahead on your new news with snow falling and sub-freezing temperatures, a woman and her dogs are lucky to be alive. We'll have that story. But first, Ed's in next with your statewide weather forecast. We'll be right back.